what product, or service, you will never buy, because of its owners. Locally, there are several restaurants in my city that I won't visit, because they are all owned by the same guy, and he was rude to me on an earlier occasion. Yes, I can be quite petty, about these things. Same issue here. When he opened his first place, he got mad, when people use street parking. He thought he could reserve those spots for himself. Now, he and his investors, own five places, and I won't go to any of them. This is an ongoing problem in Boston's North End neighborhood. Restaurants have decided, that since their dining rooms are so small and cramped, if you've ever been you know, they can take public street parking spots out in front, fence them off, and use that for patio dining. City doesn't do anything about it. Anything Kardashian or Jenner. I've hit not interested on skims and good American for years, and I still get advertisements for them. I would never give a penny, to any of those idiots. I'm the opposite when it comes to blocking ads. I block ads that I'm interested in, because I don't want to give them the satisfaction, of convincing me to spend my money on things I don't seek out myself. I purposely leave the ads alone, that I know I won't ever buy from, so that way, they keep wasting money advertising to me. I've convinced TikTok ads, that I'm interested in luxury brands and it's great. I get ads for diamonds and fragrances, that I would never ever buy. They're kinda of fun to watch. Nestle products. And it's getting difficult to find stuff, that doesn't lead back to them. It bothers me, they make baby formula. And what they did to mothers in third world countries, is partly why, we hate Nestle. Couple that with their former chairman's comments, on privatizing water, which were just flat out scary and you're left with the inescapable conclusion, that Nestle is just a effing evil business. Any product associated with MLMs. The business model actively exploits people, who need a second income, and the owners know that. Or people desperate for a first income. Yeah, my sister-in-law was this person. I spent a long time patiently explaining it to her and showing her info, and told her to go to the interview, and if it was nothing like what I described, to do what she thought was right. She ended up coming home laughing about how it was exactly what I thought it would be, and feeling silly, but thanking me. Anything from Shine. For everyone replying in this thread, a really great resource, that kept me out of the Shine, or Romway, or fastest fashion game, is called The Price of Free. It's on YouTube for free, and is a documentary about a man named Kailash, who runs a non-profit in India, that saves child slaves from sweatshops, and shows their working conditions. I saw it when I was 14 and it was a movie at Sundance, it's so enlightening. I know a pediatrician, who is obsessed with Shine. When I told her about the child slaves and such, she didn't bat an eye. She just shrugged and said, it was whatever to her. Like bro, you dedicated your career to saving children, just not the slave kinds, apparently. Her nurse that assists her, thinks raw milk is healthier than pasteurized milk though, so, that really says something to me. ETA, I have been informed, a nurse practitioner cannot be a pediatrician. However, every single person in that practice I was working at, referred to all medical staff, who oversaw children, that weren't an assisting nurse, as pediatricians. I get why, but I definitely feel like people dunk on poor people buying from Shine, while ignoring the fact that Disney, Nike, Apple, Forever 21, Old Navy, etc. all utilize exploitative labor practices overseas, aka sweatshops, at least Shine is affordable. What's the excuse for Apple, who literally uses child labor in Africa, for their expensive prices? Not directed at you, but I think there's cognitive dissonance in general, when discussing ethical consumerism, that tends to punch down towards poorer people. Bob Ross Products. Love the man. But since he died, the people that took over his brand, and started selling shit with his name on it, are awful, terrible people. Edit, this is the documentary on Netflix, Bob Ross, Happy Accidents, Betrayal, and Greed. 100% agree. Never buy a Bob Ross product. It is always the cheapest made garbage, but sold at a premium price. They charge anywhere from 50 to 150 US dollars, for a basic starter kit. The 50 doesn't sound bad, until you realize, that it doesn't come with a canvas, palette, or an easel, and only has 5 small tubes of paints, 1 brush, one knife, and an instruction booklet. If you want a cheap introduction kit for painting, just go to Walmart and go to the art aisle. They almost always have some 20 buck kit, that comes with 10 plus colors and a few brushes, typically a canvas, and sometimes an easel. With more brushes being less than a buck each. 
And if the kit is missing something, you can buy a cheap one right there. If you want quality products, then just search up some local art store nearby, and go there. I do not recommend Hobby Lobby, or Michaels, unless it's the only other option you have, and ask the employees for help. They almost always enthusiastic, about people getting into art. Any printers made by HP. I once tried to resubscribe to their ink plan, and I shit you not, they make you print out a code, to give to their support team to resubscribe. The only issue? You can't print the code with the previous subscription ink, so, you have to go out and buy new cartridges, just to subscribe. And it should be effing illegal for them, to ban third-party ink cartridges. Like bitch, it's my effing printer. I don't understand, why people still buy them after being required to subscribe to the ink service, and all of the associated shenanigans, such as not being able to print, despite having a full ink cartridge because you didn't pay for your subscription that month. The whole, they had a good reputation in the 90s, argument, gets thrown around a lot in response to that, but how does that override, you now have to pay to use something you own outright. Why are people so willing, to get screwed? I have a brother laser printer, that has lasted me years, I still have the original toner that came in the box with it, and the biggest issue I have with it is, that it randomly gets disconnected from my computers and I have to go through the setup process again. But if they switch to a subscription only model, where I couldn't refill with my own toner, or even just had to pay them every month, to keep using the printer, I would be done with it, and settle for going to a store, and paying to print. Tesla. They could be amazing cars, but I can't stand Musk. I didn't want a Tesla, because they were too expensive. Then when I could afford it, I didn't, because they are poorly designed. And then I discovered, how big of a piece of shit Musk is, and even if they fixed every single problem with Tesla, I would never buy one. All of that reasoning, was before the Model 3 came out. Musk really started showing his true nature, around that time. This is not yesterday. I refuse to purchase F-35 from Lockheed Martin. Those guys have done some shady things in the past, and until they clean their street, I refuse to spend my hard-earned cash, on their overpriced jets. My driveway is too short for that, I had to settle for an Apache. I got mine, by cashing in Pepsi points. That's how I got two carrier groups. A great way to get a quiet beach. Dang it. Wish I'd read this a month ago. Just checked, and I can't return my F-35 without a receipt. I left mine in my jeans pocket and wash them. Anyone who does not spend time, thrifting for Eastern Bloc air power, is a effing goon. Like, you can find a perfectly good MiG-29, for so much less, secondhand, that I assume, anyone I see riding an F-35, is just a fangirl, who saw it on TikTok, at this point. Prime Energy Drink. The group of F-boys that own it, are the absolute worst. Anything with Logan Paul, is an instantly, F no and F off. This one for sure. I actually don't know anyone, that's ever even bought it. Total effing clowns, the whole lot involved. Kids make their parents, who don't know anything, buy it. That's who buys it. Goop. The mechanic's hand cleaner? Or is this the Gwyneth Paltrow thing? Or did Gwyneth, secretly get her start, in the mechanic hand cleaner business, before branching out? That name, always confuses me. I have some Goop hand cleaner in my garage, for F's sake. I refused to purchase gas or petrol at BP for years, because of the Gulf oil spill. That's funny. Growing up in Alaska in the 80s and 90s, I thought Exxon had gone out of business. But turns out, they just closed shop in Alaska, after the Exxon oil spill. No one up there, would have stepped foot, in an Exxon owned place. They both suck, but if you're looking for ethically sourced gas, you're probably Saul. I just had a baby, and wasn't looking so great. Still was losing the weight from the pregnancy, plus not getting outside that often, barely getting showers in, etc. My husband bought me a hefty gift card for a Mac, which at the time I loved. Went in, mostly cleaned up, but barefaced to get a foundation match, new lipstick, you name it. I couldn't get anyone to help me. Sales associates, were helping out all the younger and prettier girls. I finally went up and asked for assistance, with a foundation match and a lipstick. The sales associate gave me the glare up and down, did a twirl with his finger to encompass my post-pregnancy body and haggard looking face, and said, Ma'am, we just can't fix ugly, just, whatever, find it yourself. I asked another sales associate, who rolled her eyes and said, I don't have time for you. I left in tears, feeling fat and ugly. 
My husband convinced me to write Mac about the incident, and corporate said they would ensure I would receive good service. Set up an appointment time for a makeover, and went back another day to the same store, Westfields in London. I was mega shy at the time, but after being ignored again, I said, I was here for my appointment. The sales associate looked at me, did a lip snarl, and told me, he wasn't going to do it, and he didn't give a shit what corporate said. He added on some haggard ugly women comment, about my face. Long story short, Mac refunded the money from the gift card. I took it, and went the Chanel counter, in Selfridges. They made me feel like a million. Helped me find a routine for, on the go, etc. The ladies from Guerlain came over and helped too. Never bought from Mac again, 15 years later. Pete's Lawn Care. Pete is the most racist piece of shit, I've ever had the misfortune to interact with, in person. I was on a plane next to him, and he screamed about being 6 feet and this grown ass man started kicking the seat off this petite Asian woman, in front of him. The Asian woman was from the US, and spoke perfect English. Pete didn't care. She tried to ignore him, and he taunted her, she tried to unrecline her seat, and he kicked it at just the right time to send her head flying into the seat in front of her. It gave her a bloody nose. He kept calling her a ton of derogatory names, due to her race, and her children sitting next to her, as well as everyone else in the vicinity, were appalled. The flight attendant apologized profusely to her, and moved her to business class. Pete was furious, that he was six feet tall, and cramped, and he should get moved up to business class. How do I know he owns Pete's Lawn Care Inn? He told us, the entire plane. He's six feet tall, he is a very successful businessman, he owns his own company, he worked from the ground up for what he has, these effing Asians ruin effing everything in this country, including his experience in economy class on a plane, etc etc. And he let the company slip. I wrote it down, so, I would never, ever forget what a racist piece of shit is Pete from Pete's Lawn Care Inn. Edited to remove the city. I really appreciate everyone's investment, but I am not trying to destroy this business. I'm only stating that I would never use it and why. I don't think it's right to sabotage his online reviews, but don't worry, they were already pretty horrible, 2.8 of 5 stars on Google, before I posted this. Let's leave him, and his very successful business alone, so, that when it fails, it's due to their shitty business practices, and not only the shitty owner. Also, this was in 2016, so, 8 years ago. Lastly, I asked my friend, who was traveling with me, what she remembered about the incident. She said, she remembered him kicking the seat so hard, the lady hit her head, that he was so vocal about being over 6 feet tall, and that the lady got moved to first class, not business. There's a local contractor, who used to come into a restaurant I worked in. He'd send one of his guys, after hours and on weekends, for emergency repairs, which is an invaluable resource, in a restaurant, with old plumbing and electric. As a result, he and his guys, came in a few times a week, for free lunch. One night, I was driving home, and I saw one of their trucks swerve to hit a cat that had already been run over. That is, the driver went out of his way to erratically change his path of travel, not to purposely kill something, but to disrespect something that had already died in an unfortunate way. I don't know why, but this is somehow, worse to me. I called their number to let them know, didn't say, who I was, or anything. I talked to the head guy, Mr. Big Stuff himself, and he proceeded to be a huge a-hole over the phone, calling me a pussy f slur for gay people, and hung up. I ran the numbers, regarding how many times they had done work for us, versus how much they got in free food, and decided to terminate our working relationship. I was fortunate enough, to serve them their first bill for lunch in 5 years. Mr. Big Stuff came to the register to point out the mistake, and I asked, if he had fielded any phone calls recently. About someone in his truck, running over a dead cat. About a week ago. Caller probably sounded like a effing pussy. Yeah, we don't offer that discount anymore. Years later, I have had several opportunities to share stories about what a D the guy is, with people building or renovating, and have pointed them to the business started by one of the guy's apprentices instead. Dude always tipped whatever his meal would have cost, and was always the one coming to fix things anyway. This is occurring in Ontario, Canada, right now, with anything owned by Galen Weston. People are boycotting any of his shops. Would you elaborate as to why? I can't try. Galen Weston is a greedy piece of shot who in addition to artificially inflating the cost of food in Canada, is also actively trying to steal our healthcare. He has been colluding with the Premier of Ontario Doug Ford, for years. 
Both are criminals, both need to be investigated by the RCMP. Weston owns a conglomerate, that includes, several grocery chains, pharmacies, and more. He basically owns, a large chunk of Canadian retail. His stores, which have always been popular, are now inflating prices, to remarkable levels. Four to five more the price. It's shocking, to be honest. And now people, are boycotting his businesses. Anything advertised by influencers. Keep that trash away from me. So, not because of owners. Depends on the influencer, if they are small influencers that I trust, then I will. But large ones, nope. Yeah, I know a great variety channel, where the dude mostly just talks about his thoughts on TV shows from the 2000s and 2010s, and sometimes does product review stuff. He did a pillow review, where he bought a bunch of fancy pillows and tested them all out. I have a lot of sleep issues, and the dude's always been wholesome, grounded, and upfront, so, when my pillows were on the out, cheap, $20 shit pillows from Walmart, I went ahead and used his suggestion. And man, did that recommendation stand true. Sponsored ads? Nah, pass. Most of those, are low quality trash. But a down to earth guy, who occasionally does product reviews, when it fits a change in their life. Yeah, I'll end an ear. Anything backed by a religious element. Hobby Lobby and Chick-fil-A come to mind right away, but if I notice any brands, actively spouting religious ideas, I'm never supporting them again. I haven't bought Chick-fil-A, in over a decade, and I only ate some in the past year, because a co-worker brought a whole platter into work, and I had a few bites for politeness sake. It was salty as hell. People are genuinely shocked, when I tell them, I don't eat Chick-fil-A, like, how do I survive without their food? LOL, there are several other chains, that sell just as good, if not better, chicken, and I don't have to give money to a company, that wants to erase my existence, as a LGBTQ plus person. Hobby Lobby is easier, because I'm the least crafty person in the world, but they still get major side eye from me. Same. My son is gay, but even before him, I would never do business, with a business, that actively discriminates against, an entire subset of people. If I see religion officially used in their business, I'm assuming, they have a problem with my family, and I stay away. Jimmy John's. You'll appreciate this. I used to live in Jimmy John's hometown, brother-in-law still does. He was eating at a local Mexican restaurant, with the father-in-law, and they started talking about JJ's, for some reason, which lead to a discussion, about what an asshole he is. They finish up and stand up to leave, only to see, Jimmy John himself, sitting behind them, with a glare on his face. So, be aware, that he knows what people, think of him. There's a local burger place, that everyone is obsessed with. But the owner is a d-head with a big ego, can't take criticism on his Google reviews, and so, he attacks them online. I will never give him a dime. Oh yeah, never go to the places, where the owners are fighting in the comments on Google or Yelp. Absolutely not. There's an owner like that, in Nashville, at Otaku Ramen. I've eaten there once, and it wasn't anything special. It still makes it hard, to not go there, with a lack of ramen options here, but I won't go back. She's the worst. I refused to go to one of the local burger places, because the owner, was acting like a jackass in his own restaurant. Barged in on working hours, took everyone's attention to himself, was loud, and obnoxious, and his friends, and because of him, staff barely served anyone, except him and his friends, for free. As a trucker, the pilot, and Flying J, truck stop chains. A few years ago, some of the higher ups got caught embezzling money out of the trucking companies, who fueled at their stations, pockets. Think, if fuel is $1 a gallon, they offer a $0.25 discount legally, but instead, these people were saying, that the discount was $0.20, and picketing the nickel. If you pay $500 every time you fuel, that's a lot of nickels. Well a company got wind of it, and there was a huge action class lawsuit about it. Someone was sent to prison, lots of people fired. If you're willing to screw the driver, several owner ops were involved, along with the bigger companies, you don't deserve my business, let alone my respect. Their air cost like, two bucks and quarters. I asked if they could change a couple bucks for me real quick. Told me to wait in line. So, I wait, and they tell me, I have to buy something to get change. I need two dollars for the air, I would have to buy multiple things, to get enough change. Told me, they didn't have anything to do with the air. My friend worked there, 
and I was meeting him for breakfast, cause I just got off work. Said, he was getting off in a few minutes, grab a drink and hang out. Cool no prob. Old guys, and newspaper carriers, are all hanging out, having a coffee. I'm just hanging out too with coffee and he gets called to the back office and comes back and says, his manager said I had to leave, because I wasn't buying anything else. These older people hang out for hours, every morning, with just a coffee, why can't I, for just 10 minutes? Bell, I just have to wait for this contract to expire. Those suckers, wiggled into the Canadian market, bought up another player, then laid it off, 4,500 people. I just cancelled with them. Within the hour of me cancelling, they call me, and ask why I switched to Kudo. I tell the rep, that it's because my bill has gone up several times over the past few years, when I was promised, that since I was on a legacy plan, it would never change. The rep goes, okay, well, I can offer you 35 gigabyte per month, for $35. I turn it down, and she goes, okay, can I ask, why you're not interested? I'm just like, lady, did you hear nothing I said before? Absolute trash company. There is an oil change place nearby, that I have been going to for years. One day, I walked in there, to get an oil change, Fox News blaring in the background, and the owner harassed me, because, I look like a liberal. I was also wearing just a little bit of clove oil, and he had something to say about that as well. Those are the guys, that need to realize, loud politics aren't good business, you are just alienating a huge percentage of your potential customers. Those kind of guys, tend to think, they're taking some kind of stand, against some imaginary injustice, when all they are doing is, shooting themselves in the foot. Uline. Richard Uline is a piece of shit racist, who along, with his piece of shit racist wife, have influenced, GOP ultra conservatives. And if I see another of their catalogs, I will lose it. I'm a mail carrier, and deliver these stupid catalogs every other day. I have people all the time telling me, they don't want it, and I better stop bringing it. I can't, though. I have to deliver, everything I get, in the morning. Just throw it away. There's a long-standing bakery in our town. Amazing donuts and breads. On Saturday and Sunday mornings, there would be lines, out the door, to grab a dozen. Absolutely wonderful donuts. Over COVID, they started circulating anti-masking and anti-isolation petitions. The owners were on social media, may have just been the female owner at the time, heavily engaged in COVID denial which also seemed to stray into anti-LGBTQ territory, along with some other popular talking points, in her belief system. There was some talk of them holding a rally or event of some kind. They supported other events of their political persuasion. Totally their right to do so, just as it's been my choice, to never go back. I miss those donuts. While I get the intention and idea of this thread, as someone who works in consumer goods and retail, the question becomes, how long is a piece of string? Because, if you start digging into almost any established, or widespread product, or service, you will not like what you find. Whether it's their religion, their ancestry, their ethics, who their financiers are, once you pull that string for one product or brand, you better be pulling it for everything. You land up, being unable to buy, or use anything. I agree with another commenter, who noted, that influential, and wealthy people, need to be more accountable for their endorsements, though. I feel the same way about people, who don't watch movies with cancelled actors anymore. Like I understand, if you don't want to watch anything with Kevin Spacey in it, or anything produced by Harvey Weinstein, but I saw someone say, they won't watch a Tarantino film, because he's mean on set. I watched a series of documentaries, called Rotten on Netflix. It was all about different foods in their supply chain. Watching it, I realized, that there is not a single resource, that is not exploited. I can't boycott all the foods, or I'd starve to death.